What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode. So as you can tell, I am no longer in Hawaii, but that doesn't mean that the fun adventures here on this channel are going to stop. I have roughly five or six or even seven videos in the archives from adventures from this summer, both spearfishing, fishing, diving. So we have a ton of stuff ready to be uploaded for you guys. So without further ado, this is a video I've been trying to edit for a long time. It's a taco catch and cook slash how to find taco video because I haven't made one in a long time. And we we're able to catch two taco that I felt comfortable bringing home to cook. So it's gonna be a grilled taco or grilled octopus catch and cook video, and also how to find taco in both shallow and deep water. See you on the water. All right guys, like I said in the intro today, I'm gonna to be showing you how to find taco. Not only am I gonna be showing you how to find taco or octopus in shallow water, I'm also gonna teach you how to find them in deep water too because it's very different. So in Hawaii, the word we use for octopus is taco, and the word taco originates from Japanese language. They're a very intelligent and interesting creature, and there are a lot of really cool ways to find them, but I'm gonna go over the easiest way to find octopus. Octopus like to eat small crustaceans, such as crabs and shrimps. However, when it comes to crustaceans and different mollusks, octopus are very messy eaters. Once they catch a crab, for instance, they'll bring it back to their hole, eat it, and then they will push the shell remains outside of their hole. So if you see a hole or an empty crab shell or oyster shell on the ground in the sand, you know an octopus is nearby. Uh, so octopus, they live in these holes in the ground and you can find holes typically on shallow reef structure and rock flats. Once they find a hole, they'll push out all of the rocks inside the hole. When a rock is sitting still for a long period of time, it's gonna look like it has algae covered in it. So it's gonna look brownish, greenish. However, when an octopus moves around, they're going to flip over that rock, exposing the underside that hasn't been exposed to sunlight or algae. And so that underside of the rock is gonna be a color like yellow, red, purple, or orange. So for instance, right here, I see a crab shell around this hole and a bunch of rocks pushed out that are also colorful. That's how I know an octopus is around or inside the hole. And as you can see, the octopus is chilling right there. So I'm just gonna poke them out. And it's pretty simple to poke the octopus out. All you have to do is take a spear or a stick of some sort and wiggle it. And this octopus was able to jet away very, very fast, but I was diving with my mom. This one's too small, but I just wanted to show her the octopus because I don't take her diving as much as I'd like. And she doesn't get to see octopus as much as I do. Finally got a hold of it, brought it back and showed my mother and I don't want to hold on to this guy for too long just because he's not legal and I don't want to harm him. So give him a shaka, let him go, let him grow. All right guys, so this is a textbook hole. I'm gonna show you right now. As soon as I dive down, you can see all the colorful rocks pushed out of a hole. That's exactly what I'm looking for. Now, as you can see right here, this is the kind of color you're looking for. A good red, purple, yellow, or orange. This kind of rock right here, not so much. It's covered in algae, which means an octopus hasn't gone away. So the technique of getting an octopus out is slowly and gently poking the octopus. You don't want to poke too hard or else it's going to stay in its hole or you might injure it if it's too small. All you have to do is poke it gently and I like to wiggle my spear and you're kind of tickling the octopus. They're going to get really irritated and fly out of their hole. Once you do that, just grab their head and you can typically shake them up and that's going to disorient them. Um, this taco was a good size, just about two pounds. So he was definitely a keeper. They do throw up a lot of ink and they're very slippery. So you wanna make sure you're holding on very tight. This is a solid one. So we're gonna take it home to eat. All right, so in order to dispatch octopus, you're gonna hold it by the head and you're going to actually bite in between the eyes and crush the brain. The brain feels like a walnut and it's about the same size. So once you feel that in your molars, you're just gonna crunch down and that's gonna kill the octopus super quick. While it does look barbaric, I promise it's the most humane way to dispatch your taco. And here's why. A bite only takes a second or a few seconds if you have to bite it again. But if you're gonna be stabbing it with your knife over and over again, trying to find the brain, that octopus is gonna be in a lot of pain for much longer. Now, sometimes you can find octopus on the coral itself. In this instance, I wasn't even going for octopus, but my dad spotted one moving around. And so this is a tricky taco hole. You can see a few pushed out rocks and a few crab shells. And there we go, I see the rocks moving and so I know an octopus is there. But again, this is a hole that I swam right over and didn't even see it. And so I was able to get them really quick and grab them behind the head and dispatched them as quickly as I could because this was a solid one. 
Um, but that's the benefit. If you want to catch more taco, go with a buddy. It's already the safest way to dive, but you want to make sure that you're uh, bringing a buddy because four eyes are better than two. And again, I completely overlooked that taco and my dad was able to find it. So always dive with a buddy. It's safer and you're going to get more stuff on the stringer that way. Here's another taco. This is a... Uh, this one was actually legal, but I decided to let him go. But he's kind of in a tight spot too. And my dad also found this one. But you can see there, there's a few rocks right outside of the hole. And I'm just kind of feeling around the hole. Sometimes they can be to the right, to the left, up, like on top of the roof. But finally found him. A few tickles and he'll come right out. Beautiful taco. And I thought about taking him home, but uh, he did look still on the smaller side. and. When they're kind of borderline a pound, I typically just let them go just because I'd rather them grow a lot bigger. It's maybe like two and a half to three to even five pounds. So here's another taco and sometimes you'll see the taco without rocks around their hole. Sometimes you can just spot them. And this kind of plays a key in finding taco in deep water. So all you gotta do is wiggle and they'll come right out. Sometimes I see videos of guys just jamming their three prong inside the hole and just you know, doing a lot of aggressive movements. But if you replay that, I, I was barely even touching the octopus. I was just kind of wiggling my spear and it came right out. And I, I find that they typically come out quicker and also you're not risking just brutally mauling the octopus in its hole, you know, because you're, you're barely touching it. It's, it's going to be okay uh, and it's going to be fine. So I decided to let that guy go. Not big enough, but super fun to just go out and catch. Yeah, if you're ever questioning whether a taco is legal or not, just let him go and let him grow. It's the most respectful way to go about it. You know, it's just better for the environment to let him go. So right here, this is just a fun clip I wanted to share. You can find taco of quite literally all sizes. This was a very small one, probably not even an ounce, but again, just barely even tap and you come right out super super cute these these guys are like popcorn for eels i'm surprised i like i don't even know how they survive to be honest um but they're adorable whenever they're this small they're just fun to watch and they're still so curious because they're still figuring out the world this one's probably only a few weeks old but yeah super cool okay now this one's a big one um this is one that i found with my mom i'm pretty sure again and again you can see rocks just protruding out of the hole that's exactly what you're looking for so i go ahead and tap in and sure enough there's a taco in the hole again you're looking for crab shells and pushed out rocks around holes that's the biggest giveaway so this guy inks up a little bit but eventually he comes out of his hole and this is a solid 1.4 or 1.6 i forget but definitely legal size um so super excited I love cooking taco and I didn't actually cook any the entire summer. I only cooked two this entire summer. So very excited to, to cook some. I, I thought I saw another octopus in there, but it ended up being an empty hole. Um, but that's another taco hole. So usually I find at least 10 to 15 taco holes on each dive whenever I'm looking. Um, I'll find more depending on how much. There's another one right there, but yeah, probably 70% of the time they're empty which means the diver already found them where the octopus is out and about looking for food. So again, just bite in between the eyes, find that brain with your molars and just crunch down as hard as you can. And you'll know the taco is dead once it turns half white or fully white. So just like that, it'll kind of rip off your snorkel, but that's a, a solid taco in the bag. Super excited. All right, now we're transitioning to deeper water. So I'm out here um, and this is only about what, 15 or 20, probably 15, I don't know. Um, not not too deep but anything past 10 or 15 tends to look like this and you'll see this atmosphere or this bottom that just looks completely flat rock like that I mean just for what looks like miles and you can find some incredible taco like Royce get it he gets some pretty big ones over in the structure that kind of looks like this so if you're interested in seeing more like taco diving videos in deeper water, because I don't do enough of it, uh, go to Royce Get It's channel. Uh, he's he's an awesome guy uh, and he catches a bunch, so go check him out. Also, I just want to share this clip of these veke that came over. I saw an uhu in the back. 
but I've never seen this much Veke before in my entire life. There are just so many. If you like Veke, this is definitely a good spot for them for sure. So anyways, we're swimming back to shore, we're done with our dive, and I spot this little black dot on the reef. And this is exactly what you're looking for in deep water. You're not necessarily looking for rocks, you're not necessarily looking for crabs, you're looking for a black hole, just like that. And as you can see, as I get closer, I'll pause right here. That kind of black color in the rock, sometimes it's gonna look like a black semicircle um, or just a black circle underneath the rock or maybe it's a very, very dark shadow. That's what you're looking for because the octopus is gonna be in their hole looking up at you and usually they're jet black. So that's really all it is. You're just looking at them and seeing them by eye. And I just poked them out just a little bit. And uh, this was obviously not a pound, but I just wanted to bring them out and let them ink up the water a little bit because sometimes some big omilus or ukus will swim by and cruise straight at you whenever they see uh, taco or um, the ink. But all I got were these little veques. I came right back. So yeah, that's how you find a uh, taco in deep water. This is the only clip I have from finding taco in deep water. Uh, so this one's too small, so I'm just gonna let them go. But I have found some pretty decent sized ones in deep water. I think the videos are like two years old or so. So you can go back, I think it was the video titled my favorite spearfishing trip so far or something. Um, but yeah, super, super fun. Those octopus are fun to catch. All right, that's all the talk on this video. We're gonna come straight to the cooking portion of the video now. So stay tuned, we're gonna do some grilled octopus. It's gonna taste good. All right, so I've let the taco marinate in two different kinds of seasonings. You can do whatever you want with marinated stuff, but what I did was one taco had sesame oil, some poke seasoning mix, and I think that was it. Maybe some pepper, but that was all I had for this one. And then for the other taco, I covered it in olive oil, rosemary, and bay leaves. In order to prepare octopus, just cut right between the eyes and you're also going to cut right behind the eyes too so that you can get the head off because the head is definitely edible. Use your thumb to push out the beak. Sometimes it can be tough to do but if you just use some elbow grease, uh, you can pop it out eventually. And yeah, the octopus are ready. Um, the head, tentacles, everything is edible except the beak and the eyes. So I'm taking these out to the backyard. We got the grill already preset. Um, and so we're gonna just throw these octopus just how they are on the grill. And you also wanna make sure that you're freezing your octopus before you cook them because this is gonna tenderize the octopus and you're also gonna wanna get the slime off the octopus. I have videos on how to do those. So go check out the previous Taco Catch and Cooks um, I don't want to do it every single time, but once you've frozen the octopus and you've got it all salted and you got the slime off, you can now put them on the grill. So what I like to do whenever I grill octopus is I'll put it on the grill and I'll put all the tentacles out. And this is just so that you get a nice char um, evenly throughout the octopus. And then I also put the head meat on top as well. You're going to do this for both octopus. Make sure that it's all evenly spread, um, nothing is covering anything, and again, put the head on too. Now you're gonna wanna flip the octopus after a while once it has a nice char, and you're gonna grill the other side uh, for equal amount of time. Just let it sit. Um, you can also cut the head open so that it's got a little bit more time on the grill. And you're just gonna watch for any irregularities. Um, make sure to flip. Uh, after a while on both sides uh, but really it's just a waiting game it's a super simple way to cook octopus but it's super delicious you can also do this technique of pressing the octopus down to develop a better char for a better texture either way kind of play around with it explore a little bit but yeah just keep flipping until it's looking cooked on both sides you're probably gonna have to flip multiple times but that's really really all you're doing once you think it's about ready you can just put them down onto a tray of some sort and cut them up once you cut them up, they're pretty much ready to eat. So that is the little mini catch and cook session. This octopus was delicious. I was able to share it with family and friends. Hope you enjoyed this video and we'll go back to the dorm room.
All right, hope you enjoyed that video, guys. If you like this content, make sure to subscribe. And yeah, stay tuned for the next episode because it's gonna be awesome. I was able to collaborate with Fishing Grills from Hawaii and we did an awesome, awesome event. Out on the west side, uh, went spearfishing for Pow Pow and got a golden trevally from the cookup. So make sure to tune in for the next episode. Mahalo for watching. See you on the next adventure.